So you know that saying, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, some of us find that really annoying because we don't have a village and we've never had access to that village. And we don't understand why someone should be talking about a village raising our child when we can do it perfectly fine ourselves. We have different reasons why we don't like that saying. And in this video, we're going to talk more about that phrase. Personally, I really do believe that it takes a village to raise a child. I mean, I could sure do with a village in raising my two kids most days. But I understand that in the West or in the world that I currently live in, and in this modern day, it's usually not possible. And here are some of the reasons why. The first one is that people are just too busy. It's the normal hustle and bustle of modern life. It's like your, your village got stuck in a traffic jam. Everyone's running from one place to another. Now, how can you form a village when everyone who could be in your village is really busy, basically trying to survive and sustain their own nuclear families? Now, the second reason why you don't have a village is that we're living in a digital age. Everyone is inside their phones and inside their laptops. We're digitally disconnected. Technology is great and, and sometimes it can make us feel more connected than we actually are because if we have family members living in different parts of the world, we can actually connect with them via the different forms of technology that we have access to now. However, it can also make us feel disconnected from each other because we get lost in our different forms of technology. So where did our village go? It's on Facebook somewhere. The third reason why we can't find our village is that our community dynamics have completely shifted. So we used to know the old lady who lives down the street, or we used to know the person who owns the corner shop down the street. But now we don't know anyone. We don't even know our next door neighbor. We can't even borrow cups of sugar from our neighbors anymore. It is now just, it goes as far as a quick hello. It's not all doom and gloom though. It's not completely hopeless. With some work and with some awareness, the village can start to make a comeback. Um, it might not happen in the next five years. It might not even happen in the next 10 years, depending on which part of the world you live in, but it can happen. So that's saying it takes a village to raise a child. It's not just a, a phrase or just a saying, because in many African societies and traditions, it's an actual concept of community and family and in a way that children are brought up in general. The saying is about the whole community playing a part in bringing up a child. Now the phrase, it takes a village to raise a child is really beautiful because it is so adaptable. And that concept is still a guiding principle in some African communities to this day. It's adaptable because it transcends African villages and it contributes to how people raise their children worldwide. So picture this, it's a vibrant village where everyone knows everyone and everyone plays a part in shaping every child's values and morals and that transcends geographical boundaries as well. And speaking of worldwide, let's look at the three main reasons why your village is fading away bit by bit. And I think one of the biggest reasons for that is globalization. The world is getting smaller in so many ways, and I think that's great, but it comes with its own challenges. Another reason why your village is fading away is because of economic difficulties or economic challenges. Because just putting food on the table for some people and their families can feel like a monumental task. And that's really sad and unfortunate. Another reason why your village might be fading away is because of stoicism. Have you heard of that concept before? It's that keep calm and carry on mentality, which definitely has its merits. But it also keeps us from reaching out for help to other people when we need it. It stops us from building connections with other people. But like I said before, hope is not lost. We have to learn to be more enthusiastic, more reliable, more proactive, more honest. And all those qualities will make us useful members of someone else's village. And let me explain. One of those qualities is enthusiasm. And that is something that is very contagious. And it makes us a, a standout person of someone's village. Be enthusiastic can give someone that burst of positivity and uplift them. It's like sprinkling sunshine around you everywhere that you go. Cheesy as it sounds. Being reliable means that you become the backbone of any strong village. From simple tasks to lending a listening ear, it makes you a fundamental part of a village. And I don't even need to talk too much about how important it is for you to be an honest member of a person's village, because that way they know that they can rely on you and the things that you say, they can trust your word. It helps you to make authentic connections with other human beings. Proactivity is another worthwhile quality to 
cultivate for yourself because it means that you spot problems before they even arise and that you can tackle them before they become a real issue in your community. And then being empathetic means that you're the actual heartbeat of your village. You understand other people because you put yourself in their shoes and that means that you create meaningful connections with them. You don't just hear them, you truly understand them. So you see, whether it's heartfelt conversations or being able to provide quick tips for someone in need or just being a listening ear for someone, there are practical ways that you can make a difference every day in your community and be a strong part of someone else's village. But look, there are upsides in not having a village and there are lots of people that will point those upsides out to you because they're actually enjoying parenting on their own. The first of those upsides is that you get to cultivate your independent thinking. You're tackling challenges on your own, you're problem solving on your own, and, and that makes people feel good. The second benefit of not having a village is that you have streamlined decision making. And for someone like me, that's a perk definitely, because I don't like to have too many voices in my ear at one time on one topic. So if you're of the view that there can be too many cooks in the kitchen, then you'll enjoy parenting on your own or solo parenting. The third benefit of not having a village is that you find the strength in autonomy. So you enjoy the fact that you're the captain of your own parenting ship and you're leading your family in things or leading your children at least in activities, you're making decisions. Some people actually really enjoy that autonomy. Another benefit is that it forces you to build connections outside of your immediate potential village because you you make the effort to go online look for for baby clubs different mom groups parenting groups and in that way you form connections with people that you would otherwise never have met within your immediate potential village so yeah solo parenting or not having your own village is not all bad it's also about celebrating your small and big victories it's about going out of your way making an effort stepping outside of your comfort zone and, and in that way, finding something rewarding outside of that zone. Just remember that whether you're a part of someone else's village or not, or whether you have a village of your own or not to help you with your parenting, everyone's parenting journey is unique. You look at yours and you look at the upsides of it and you celebrate those small things. Celebrate your strengths, learn from your experiences. And then the most important thing here really is to find other people who connect with you and your experiences people who understand you and appreciate your parenting path. So thanks for watching guys. If you enjoy this video, share it with other people who might find it interesting, like it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll be back soon. See you.